Okay, so last time I left off, um, I had gotten both the hoses pulled out of the firewall, and I went on ahead and plugged them together like this, and this is one method that you can do uh, if your heater core goes bad on you. It's not recommended for long-term use, but basically all I did was just plug the two hoses together. Okay, now that we've got these two lines both disconnected from each other, uh, we'll get this next piece of pipe out. It's very, very important to remember, uh, at least as far as I know, when you're doing heater cores, don't get your hoses mixed up because they look just like each other. And if you put three days between you, between uh, when you first start the job and when you go to finish the job, it could screw you up. But I remember where things went, so we're good. Okay, I made mention the other day um, of a little trick I had, and I didn't show how to do that trick. Get this a little bit more loose. Get that out of my way. I did it to the one hose, but I didn't do it to this one. But again, you take your inky dinky little screwdriver and you just push it in like that, you know, pry up a little bit, try and get it to break loose without tearing it. Then you take your WD-40, spray a little bit in there like that. And then you can just rub it around, twist it around. Sometimes it takes a while to get it done that's how you do it. YouTube's gonna hate me but I like this song so I'm gonna turn it up a little bit. Anyways. Just work it around. You know maybe I don't have a tripod so it makes it a little bit difficult to get all this stuff done. Okay go a little bit farther down spray a little bit more WD-40. Uh, my auto teachers would probably shoot at me if they knew I was using WD-40. For some reason, I just don't think it's the right thing to do, but it's something I've always done, and it's always worked. But breaking these hoses loose without breaking them. That should be enough. This thing hopefully it'll finally pop out. Hey, look at there. Pulled out. Sweet. All right, well... I did a little bit of vacuuming in here, so kicked up a lot of dust. And apparently, we have some mouse diseases going around, or something. So I gotta wear my Darth Vader mask so I don't get sick and die. So anyways, um, next thing we gotta do is pull that heater core out. Right there. Uh now the other day when I said it was literally just a pull back and then pull down, it's like falling out right now, but there it is. Just literally popped right out. So I've got the old heater core here and uh, nothing leaked out on the ground. It's kind of weird. Of course it was probably already all leaked out. Hopefully this thing is right. We'll stick it next to the other one and compare. They look close enough to me. So, I'll throw it in. We'll get this thing back together. So, uh, this is what all of this should look like um, before it was completely full of mouse nest. And in there too, I've spent the last hour uh, vacuuming it out. Anyways, finally ready to put that new heater core back in. So we'll go on ahead and get it done. Anyways, it's got to go in with one hand. It's a little difficult. We'll get her did. It goes up and in. Try 
you to figure out some way to grab my little camera here. Hmm. You know what? I don't think I need this cheap little piece of crap anymore. Okay. So, heater core slides up in the hole like that and like that. That's it for the heater core. It's in. I just gotta make. So, if you look, you can see where it is coming through just gotta push it up a little bit more and uh, try and get the hoses through And that's how it comes through and it just sits in there like that pretty easy okay so the next step we got here is just getting our hoses back on and this hose went to that side these guys might be a little stubborn to get on we got a helicopter flying over That one almost on. Just a matter. I'm trying to hold on. Alright, well I got one hose on. Time to get the other hose on. Uh, not a hose. Go ahead and juice this up a little bit. There we go. Oh, maybe I ought to tighten this one down. Tightening it down might help it from, uh, you know, coming back off. Ooh, ants! Starting early. Yeah, we've let this soak for a few minutes. We're gonna we're gonna dump this right into that ant den because I really don't like ants. Probably won't kill them anyway. Those things are invincible. So we've got both hoses on. I just got to tighten them down. Get that plate the rest of the way cleaned up, and then we fill it and see what happens. And they're on and tight. Sweet. And we've got that little plate back in. Sweet. Okay, so it's sitting here running and we don't have any drips. So we know it's good so far. And I've got some uh, coolant in it. And I'm about to put some water in it. I have been putting water in it. Looks like it's almost full. So we're just going to have to let it run. Try and get all the air pockets out. But, uh, I think we did a pretty good job. It wasn't too hard. It's a killer way to do it. Well, our temp gauge hasn't moved much, but it's moved a little. Well, our temp gauge did come up. We don't have any leaks there. We don't have any leaks coming from there. And we got heat coming out of the vents, so I think we did all right. That is how you do a heater core in a 1989 Ford Bronco 2.